come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You can catch us every Saturday right here on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, or wherever podcasts are found. Thanks for listening. Every Saturday night, we sit around, uh, watch a movie, then we talk about it for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight, we watch the movie chosen by... All of, All of us. us. <laughs> what? <laughs> maybe, what? Maybe everyone but Colin. <laughs> oh, no, no. It was a unanimous decision, I think, right? Because we yeah. have been doing this listener's choice uh, selections for the past. We're going to do four of them. Yeah. yeah. This is our January. third. Our third. Yep. Uh, you selected them, listeners, on in November, and we made a list, watched a bunch of trailers, and made selections on what we were going to watch. So this one was chosen by... A Twitter user known only to us as G Money. G Money. Yep. So G Money, thank you for this. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, G Money. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. (laughs) And the movie was called Terror Tract from the year. 1980, no, not 1980, it should be 1980, 2000. 2000. 2000. It feels, it feels, feels like, like 1980. 1980. It did. 2000. It, it felt aged. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Also known as The House on Terror Track, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Depends yeah. on where you look. I guess yeah. so. Because we don't know if that was a British title or what? Working title or. I did look up a little bit of information on this just to find out where it came from. It was a movie that played a couple of horror film festivals. And then was acquired by the USA TV network and it aired in 2000 uh, as part of like a Halloween series or something Mm -hmm. that they were doing. So it wasn't made for TV as evidenced by at least one fuck, one shit and a side boob. Yes. (laughs) Also a great name for a book. (laughs) One fuck, one shit and a side boob. (laughs) I would read that book. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I mean, what's uh, the, I mean, I guess we just get into the movie, right? I mean, like, it comes well, at a loss for words. It's an anthology film, right? So that's yes. what we're saying. This is, if you haven't heard of this movie, the uh, we're not surprised, track. but, uh, well, I was surprised that there actually is like a little cult following for really? this thing. Yeah. Uh, when I looked it up, just trying to find the information, I found it's made by a company out of Atlanta, Georgia, and they were really happy that, you know, they got to make another mm-hmm. movie after this. Um, but the soundtrack by Brian Tyler is like a th- like it's a thing amongst mm-hmm. uh, really? cinephile. You I know, like the soundtrack. M- yeah, music collector. Decent. It was decent. And I guess the movie, the last reference that I could find about it was like a bunch of people saying like this movie Terror Tract is on Netflix. What? It's not on Netflix anymore, but I guess uh, when it was put on Netflix, it was like this is the first time we've been able to see this movie in like ten years. <laughs> So do you think if we really push it, Mondo will release like a vinyl soundtrack for there this? There is a vinyl soundtrack for <laughs> this. Really? I don't think it's Mondo, but somebody put, yeah. Oh my God. And, and Fright Rags will put out t-shirts and Shout Factory go. will do a deluxe Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's our mission. This, this needs a Blu-ray. Yeah. Dude, nice. let's push it. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Bringing back Terror Track. It, it yes. is on DVD. It's on a double feature with Cherry Falls. Oh, really? If anybody remembers Cherry Falls, that was another Jay movie Moore. that went the same route it was a film festival thing that ended up being acquired by usa and they put them both out on dvd last and time i saw it, it was on amazon for like 78 dollars yeah like a shit ton of money yes yeah. didn't screen yeah. factory put out a cherry falls blu-ray i don't know i think they did i'm gonna look it up look oh, it up bro. Screen Shit. factory put out a cherry falls blu-ray which i could not believe <laughs> having seen that movie that was like jamie blanks right he was the guy who did urban so. legends or i think oh, really? so yeah. oh legends like I think he did the first, the first one. one. Yeah, okay. I think that was like he was graduating from the low budget world of <laughs> Cherry Falls. Well, he did a short that was pretty cool. Then uh, Cherry Falls, and then I'm Urban actually not Legends. surprised to hear that this is a cult following because I can totally see myself personally, well, like catching this late night on USA and falling in love with it. Like I can, I, and just searching for it for years. Like every night before you go to bed, you see what's on. You hope Terror Tracks on. No. <laughs> I saw this movie so long I can't find it anymore. Yeah, Cherry Falls Shout Factory. Dun, 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 dun. There it is. You know what that means? No, it doesn't mean anything. That means, it means Terror Tracks coming. coming in the wind. Yeah, 
That would be great. Everybody start writing them. Yeah. Tell them Please. that you really Get want this. <laughs> Pound them for Terror Tract. Yeah. It's a Terror Tract. It's John a, Ritter. Not just any anthology. It's a realtor anthology. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> the one tying theme in this movie is that this is a realtor telling all these stories. Which and it's a, glorious. Which is a great idea for... Uh, for a horror movie, like you get a different story with every house that you're showing uh, the couple that you're bringing them around, and you know you get something you can give them something different with each house you go to. Mm-hmm. And boy, do we get something different yes, with each we house do. we go mm-hmm. to. I got a question for you: Has John Ritter, as far back as you can remember, has he always been a dramatic actor, or has he been a comedic? Comedic, comedic. Three yeah, companies. Three's companies, companies were started. Yeah. Simple yeah. rules. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bad Problem Santa. child. Anybody? Yeah. Problem yeah. child. Yeah. Yes. Bad Santa. I'm just making sure. Eight simple like, rules. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mostly know him as comedic. Yes. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. at some point somebody said, "Hey, we should put this guy in Stephen King's It." Yeah. 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 In a, in right. A, yeah. yeah. Role. It, so. What? There was another. Wasn't there another horror movie he was in? Um. I can't think of it right now. I remember him getting killed like viciously in something. I'm gonna look it up. Oh yeah, what is? I should remember this, but don't. But uh, it's not just John Ritter. It's John Ritter with a nice lush beard. Oh, he, uh, he, he has looks a like good beard. He, he, he looks like looks Bob fake. Vila in this he movie. He does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or at least Al Borland. Something. Yeah, like. you trust yes. a realtor more if they have a full beard. I trust anybody more. Than I, have a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, see, it's yeah. the beard just kind of adds to the so. authority. Yeah. It's like there's nothing wrong with this guy, as long as it's not like a, a gangly. That's one the thing. It's a good it's, beard. Yeah. It's not a, a full lumberjack com- beard. It's just like a well it looks filled really in beard. It yeah, does. it looks really. It looks fake. colored on. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, so he's a real estate agent that's taking around a DeLuise offspring. Yes. David DeLuise, who is the brother of Michael DeLuise, who is in Kilmore Girls. Yes. Who, is, the who are both Dom? the sons of Dom DeLuise. Okay. Yes. I was going to say, Dom DeLuise, DeLuise comes yeah. in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he and his wife, uh, David DeLuise, and his wife are shopping for a house in this neighborhood, which we will determine is the terror tract of the title. Yeah. Yes. And... Uh, and so he's uh, he takes him to the first house, right? Yeah. Is there anything? Is, uh, I mean, John Ritter's character is a very exuberant uh, uh, realtor at the mm-hmm. beginning, right? He's very mm-hmm. charismatic. Yeah. Like you, you, you feel like he's very successful, and they yes. they talk on that, asking him like, "Oh, well, you seem to be very well to do with your car," and he makes mention of having like really good incentives, the five five million, five million in the first five years or yes. something like that. He's even got a license plate on his car mm-hmm. that says five, five mil. mil. Mm-hmm. And you can tell this couple are, are rich yuppies because she's got the 80s classic yuppie look going on, the white polo with the sweater <laughs> on yep. the sweaters, <laughs> the which sweater is what made me shoulders. think 80s because no one in oh, yeah. 2000 was dressing like that. Very no. true. Yeah. Even the richest of the rich were not Oh, Bride of that Chucky. That's what I remember. He gets the nails in him. Oh, yeah? Oh, ah, I yeah. forgot. That's the one I was thinking. Oh, like, he yeah. dies really bad in the movie. and like, right. Bride of Chucky. Yeah. That's it. You're I right. forgot about that. I know. Yeah. Hmm. A classic. Yeah. Wasn't his kid in like uh kid no, never mind. A, it was a different his kid was in a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's not in like Oh, he's in Sling Blade. Freddy versus Jay. No, that's Tom Hanks's kid. Colin Hanks. Colin Hanks? Yeah. Okay. In Freddy versus Jason? Yeah. Isn't no. he in that? No. Then maybe it's the Ritter kid in I, th- I think it's a Ritter, Jason. yeah. It's a Ritter. Yeah. Yes, his kid is in that. Okay. All right. Yep. Wow. See there. All these celebrity kids end up. In their respective horror movies. All right, so the first story do we get into? What was it called? The Nightmare. Mm -hmm. The Nightmare. Of course. And how do we set this up for the listener at home? The Nightmare involves a... Um, uh, from it starts out with a husband uh, leaving his house and leaving his wife. Looks like he's going on into work or on a business trip. He's leaving awfully late at night, and there's a figure watching from the bushes. And so, uh, you know, she goes up to her room, starts getting undressed. It feels like there's a stalker kind of entering her house and going up to find her. And then we find out that it is her lover who is visiting her late in the night. Her husband has left. I know. This also starts Skins. the uh, thing that uh, Michaela was pointing out, where everybody starts taking their shirts off. In this, yes, movie. yeah, a lot of yeah this guy really does like does not want to wear a shirt. No, he does oh, not. I meant the the, well, the wife, but you know, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <Her laughs> takes hers off first. Yeah, but even yeah, like, that's what we noticed first: the wife taking her shirt off. Not that I'm kidding. Well, we were hoping that it. <laughs> that was the moment where we were like, "Is this an right. R-rated movie or a made-for-TV movie?" It sure felt like it was a TV. Movie. Right. They yeah. bought it because they're like, we can put this on TV. We don't mm-hmm. have to cut much out. Yeah. There's also, yeah, because uh, we were imagining that John Ritter is telling these stories. <laughs> yes. In you know, great detail. How much detail is he including in I these mean, stories? I mean, he has to tell them everything that happened. 
and I'm, he seems like a guy who would add little flourishes to the story. So uh, explaining those details, the intimacy, I think, is something he would definitely do. You Gotta get it all out. A realtor like disclose something about a property you were looking at. Do I look like a man who would buy a house? <laughs> you're the no. like, you're <laughs> apartment homeowner here. Uh, okay. uh, nah, they don't care. No, you can. Mm-hmm. Shit goes down in apartments. They try not to tell you. Yeah, I don't think they. Well, have I thought to it tell was you. like, isn't it legal that they have for to? houses? For I houses, think. for renting, yeah. they don't have to tell you shit. I I know when I when we were renting, we were renting houses. I asked because I wanted to hear a story yeah, like I, this. I yeah, wanted yeah, to hear yeah, a yeah. story, so I asked. I never got one. Yes, yeah, a drug um, house. Huh? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. There was one house that we were looking at that somebody had died in, but it was, I don't know, I don't remember. An old person just died? No, it was a murder. Oh! Yeah. Ooh. That apparently Jeez. was like on the news like a year before that or whatever. I did look it up and now I don't remember. See, you don't buy that house because there's always like people coming back and murdering you for whatever reason. Yeah. See, they now, had a murder basement. see now I'm just picturing Michaela stalking around realtors wanting yeah. stories. <laughs> Got any good murder house about- stories? <laughs> no one died here. Like, even an dog or something yeah. like come on i mean <laughs> a lot of people this is a really old house someone had to have right, gotten here at some point right <laughs> they're like well, let me tell anything. you let me tell you about the square footage no that's great but tell me more <laughs> <laughs> they're like secret walls that push back and reveal like a murder room that's or something the dream. that's yeah. the dream it is yeah, yeah. i built one in my, yeah, in my dungeon down here um <laughs> Yeah, the so okay, so the the initial setup is the the you know the cheating wife. Yeah, and that's all misdirection because they're actually like you know, it's going to focus on these two people, mm. and then surprise, surprise, the husband comes home <gasps> armed with a shotgun, an old shotgun. Yeah, so his plan here is to stage a murder suicide. Yes, yes, like you do, right. It's kind of like an intricate way of doing this. I it's mean, such a roundabout way. Why not really just shoot is. them both and say it was a murder suicide? Well, because yeah. at this point, you want like to get a little, get a little revenge on them. It's like you fucked me over with this. Now, I'm yeah, it make was you. personal. Now, because he's like, I want you to see it. I'm gonna let you wriggle a little bit and watch him die. It's very, mm-hmm. which is yeah, and it's. I mean, it's kind of like if you think about in a real world situation, it's kind of terrifying to be like, this, what can you do? I mean, like you can try and attack the guy, but he's gonna shoot you and. He makes his wife, like, hang herself, Mm -hmm. which is terrifying. After writing the note that incriminates that she Mm -hmm. found this guy breaking into her house and shot him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she's going to hang herself. And then hung herself. But everything goes awry. It goes awry in not the best way possible. (laughs) He literally pulls the rug out from the Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) That not, that wouldn't work. Yeah, I don't That's think so. A, no, uh, not, not enough umph into that. Did you like the like dramatic tension they tried to add with like the thatch seated chair she was standing on? They kept like oh, yeah. slightly yeah. giving away a little yeah. bit yeah. to like, make you think she was going to prematurely kill herself. Well, that's what yeah. I thought too. Because yeah. I'm like, they, it's that chair. It's yeah. like it's the one you hear about. Like it breaks through yeah. and then she's going to hang herself and something's going to go wrong. Yeah, they knew what they were doing with that. Oh, they yeah. did. Yeah, sneaky bastards. They end up knowing what they're doing about a lot of stuff in this they movie, do. which was kind of surprising. Uh, surprising, <laughs> but it all does go wrong. And he's thwarted with a, the rug being pulled out from under him. And there's a fight that ensues. The wife uh, eventually gets rescued by the lover, cut down. Mm-hmm. And then there's some inconsistencies with shotgun that kind of bothered me in this first episode of, of this one. Yeah, the, the fact that the husband has to reload the shotgun, he even though he does shotgun just to buy the wife time to stab. Yep. Yeah, he, yeah, he did shoot the shotgun when the rug got pulled out. It oh it shit, false that's shot. right. It oh, really? false oh, fired. Okay, yeah. All I, right. didn't, oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah. I was gonna say I blocked yeah. that out. Yeah, me too. yeah. He was going yeah, back. Too. Shotgun job. went up and shot over their heads. Really? Uh, yes. Both barrels. Well, well, I suppose you would because you fall. Well, he had them both yeah. cocked. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Huh. All right. I missed that completely because I was wondering, like, why would he stop and reload? Yeah. Yeah. It was so pointed too the way they shot it that he was reloading. That's why yeah. it was extra weird. Was, right, the camera like focus was right on him reloading. So. Yeah, because if you don't get that he actually shot, that's a really weird scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, they yeah. should have had a little more focus on the the first shot. I think like a little more. Was there, there. Was, was there sound? It didn't feel like there was sound, which is not, weird because the foley artist is all over the place <laughs> right. in every other scene in this movie. Like there wasn't as squish, much emphasis squish, as there was squish. on the footprints, yeah. but yeah, I think it was there a little bit. Okay. He really was like, these footprints, I'm going to make them sound great. Right. Like, <laughs> Clearly well, he heard a gun, but he hears lots of footprints. <laughs> yeah. And squeaky wet. doors. Yeah. Right. But that's the reoccurring thing that he's kind of like, he's got to get that across. 
And boy, do they get that across. The squeaky feet and the fucking footprints that yeah. we see. Like, how many times do they repeat, in that first story, repeat shots? The outside of the house, her oh, looking out the window mm. to the uh, muddy footprints coming up to the house, yeah. and the squeaking feet it's walking the because they spent all the, the money in the second story, <laughs> which, we'll so. but <laughs> which we'll get to. Which we'll get to. They're yeah. teaching you. They're making you, sus- right. you know, think a certain way so they yeah. can uh, subvert your expectations yes. later. But these two people, these two lovebirds, now that the husband, they, you know, they turn the tables on the husband and kill him. Yes. And a rational person says, call the cops. Call the cops. Naturally. You know, that probably you could explain this away in a way that the cops would still, you know, maybe be like, well, eh, sure. Little, you know, but there's you might go to trial. Evidence. Maybe some think, involuntary manslaughter, you know? Yeah, but <laughs> I think you could be like, yeah, I mean, we were cheating and all that stuff, but he yeah. did attack us and try yeah. to kill yeah. us. Yeah. I mean, like, there's there's his handwritten note, his car is parked like a mile down the road. There's, yeah. it could it could have worked out. I but think. not for these people. No, no, no. They no. come up with the most insane. Like, how were they thinking this through? I was, you know, right. thinking during the like they weren't obviously. No, how were they going to explain the husband being gone? Like, were they just going to leave and be like on the run? Because you got to file missing persons reports to make all this thing uh, sure. seem legit, right? right? And if she's going to get like his money, he's got to be dead. Like, yeah. he even says you're a rich widow now. She like, has wow. motive, yeah. Yeah, they're just yeah. like, well, when this blows over, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, there are people over. looking for your husband now that he, he just people just don't disappear. Yeah, well, is no. he just going to be missing? Yeah. They decide to, you know, do the old standby, the old Tales from the Crypt standby. You yeah. tie a couple of bricks to his feet and drop him off in the, of the body. river. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So this, of course, leads to uh, at least three reoccurring scenes where mm-hmm. the wife wakes up in the middle of the night. Goes to the window and looks out. She hears somebody the squeaking gate? through the house, and there's these muddy footprints like leading up the walk, yeah, and mm-hmm. into the house. And somebody comes to the door. <laughs> there was one pretty good jump scare moment in when she goes back to the bed. Yeah, yes, that yeah. one got me. I Decent. wasn't expecting yeah, that. I wasn't expecting that either. I'll give him credit yeah, for that, that one. Good That's about at that moment in the movie where you go like. Oh, okay. All right. So that actually kind of works. So now I'm paying attention to this movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, all right. You got me on that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's also the um, the cop, the cop, the the buddy, friend of Lewis, right? The husband, the murdered husband. Mm-hmm. He's got this police buddy who comes over looking to go fishing. Or they had a fishing trip or something planned, yeah. and he starts to suspect. Maybe we're not even sure. His act, his uh, dialogue later makes it sound like maybe he didn't. Well, I was even wondering because the the husband he clearly states that he's had this planned. Why would he plan a fishing trip the next morning with a cop? It doesn't seem well because you got to keep everything. You know, on the up and up, like everything's normal. We had this plan that, oh, my God, my wife killed herself the night before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right? Maybe he just wanted to kill his wife as a way of getting out of that fishing trip. Maybe. Maybe he was like, fuck, this guy keeps asking me to go on this goddamn yeah. fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> what was he, clay? clay? Clay. Clay. There it is. He was creepy as hell. Creepy Clay, yeah. yeah. That's knew. a good point. He knew something was going on. That's why he's being creepy. Yeah. I suppose well, he could like leave the house of the fishing trip, come back, and discover mm-hmm. the, his wife yeah. and the, and the uh, lover. Yeah. I keep wanting to say mistress, but that's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Clay at least puts them onto the idea that, hey, you know, like, what car did he take? And then they're like, oh, no, his yes. car is parked down the road and they're going to find it. And we got to get How rid of this know? car. How do they know what? where the car was parked? They just went driving around looking for it. You think so? I think so. Because they're I like, mean, well, this car has to be somewhere. I thought we saw them walking up to it, though. They drove up, they drove up, drove up to it. To it yeah. But how would they know they're like, ah, oh, I guess they were driving around. Like, there it is. Yeah. How would they know he, like, parked near? They would have been well, fucked if he didn't. If you factor in how long it took him to leave the other guy show up and then him to show up at the shotgun, it couldn't have been that far. I guess so. Smarter than they look, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. People so. de- people definitely saw them walk up to that car, though. Like, there oh, was yeah. definitely ah. witnesses oh, yeah. to that. Like, people, people saw things. <laughs> oh, wait. People walk up to cars all the time. Why is that? <laughs> and I always suspect them <laughs> of doing the something of, wrong. But that's, <laughs> but that's the car of a man who's missing. Right, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. This is going to be a problem later. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but they be. find the car. And they can't move it because mm-hmm. there's no keys. There's only one set of keys for this car. And rather than like find some way to start this car, I know there's like no YouTube back then, so they can't Google how to hotwire a car <laughs> to figure this out. It's 2000. There's some internet. There's something like they yeah. should be able to like or look up how to do it or find hire someone to do it. Mm-hmm. Something. But no, they decide is like 
I have to go back. I have to go down there and get the keys from your husband in the lake. It's like, what? <laughs> At night. Yeah. Well, why? Well, yeah, why? At least yeah. she also shared our sentiment because she was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I love when the characters have the same reactions as right. us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, Wait, what? Yeah. The voice of the audience. It kind of feels like the writer is like, you know, is right there with like watching the movie with you kind of. You know? right. It's like it just expects like, what you're going to do. and you know. Right. They're like saying like, yeah, we know, but we'll just have a character react to it and be fine. And he leaves at like three o'clock in the afternoon. What is he doing for four hours before he decides to get in a boat and go to that lake? He had to go get the snorkel gear. Yeah. I know when I shop for snorkel He just snorkel had a gear, mask, though. He didn't actually have, hours. like, a snorkel. He just had the mask. <laughs> right? he, yeah. just, he just had goggles. It's he tri- he tried unprepared. on all yeah. the different snorkels. It would have been better if he showed up with a tank of oxygen <laughs> yeah. or something, and he's yeah. just diving in there. They would at least shown some forethought. So, like, like, yeah, right. <laughs> like, full-on diving gear. And <laughs> Fli- shown, flippers like, and everything? Yeah, and shown, like, a montage of him actually putting it on. Mm-hmm. There you go. Just some I, rocking yeah. music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is another moment where he takes his shirt off to dive in, <laughs> but goes like we said. But keeps goes, his jeans keeps on. Keeps his jeans on. <laughs> Wet jeans. Bad. Wet jeans are not good. Wet jeans are not. They good. They weigh you down or something. <laughs> never going to swim. It's like so that. uncomfortable. Yeah. You ever had wet jeans? They're it's chafing. Just not comfortable. It's bad. And yes, it'll but weigh you down water? a lot. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. It's not good. Yeah. So this sets up the uh, the, you know, the because. Once she, he gets down there, he sees. Oh, we, we, we should. She's been having the dreams. Yeah, because she's, she's been having haunted. the dreams of the husband's yeah. coming back and strangling her. Dude, and so, yeah. at this point, Loverboy dives in and is attacked by the living dead corpse of the husband. Mm. Then yes. she wakes up, and we go like, "What? Well, did this actually happen? Was she seeing through his eyes, or was this a dr- another dream? You know, just kind of a premonition that something bad has right. happened right. to the other guy." Then she goes back to the window because she hears noises More yet footprints. again for the third time. Yeah. Sees the footprints again. And so we're, we get a repeat of the scene where we hear the quick, 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 yep. squishy yeah. footprints outside the door. Once before she, what, opened it up and it was her dead husband. Mm-hmm. Then she locked the door and her dead husband was in the bed. That's yeah. what the jump scare mm-hmm. was. So this time she's ready. She's not fucking around anymore. No. She grabs a shotgun from under the bed. She lets him that door handle go. And then she's like, no. By the way, she's the best screamer. When she woke up that first time from that nightmare, oh, yeah. where she's just staring <laughs> off and another just, Whoa! It's great. Uh-huh. But this time, this time she's ready and she's not, like Holly said, she's not fucking around. She no, shoots through that door because she's going to kill that dead husband that's coming back for her. Mm-hmm. But what happened? She kills Lover Boy. Oh, who actually what? did get he the got keys. the keys. He got the keys. Came dun, back. Dun, dun. That's like a pretty decent. That feels like a Tales from the Crypt it, type. Yeah, yeah totally. Twilight Zone. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, or Alfred Hitchcock presents yeah. or something like that. It does. That. It feels because like it sets up the whole thing that there's like a supernatural element to this, but you but realize they, that this right. is only happening in her dreams. Mm-hmm. We're still seeing it, so it feels you know like mm-hmm. there's a it's a ghost story, right? But but it's not. You know, it isn't. It's all misdirection to get you to that last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is pretty good. I'm saying. And yeah. she's so distraught. So distraught. Hangs herself. The murder suicide uh, actually came to fruition. Oh it shit! Did. But that is where the supernatural comes in because the cops say that she's covered in some type of slime. <gasps> dun dun dun. dun. End of story. One. End scene. Boom. Story two takes place in another house because, of course, when the uh, well, I the mean, couple, when he tells them that story, right? They're yeah. like, we don't want. You this always got to come back to John Ritter. <laughs> yep. Doing his just, just that, just that nervous like. I'll tell you what happened. Like, he's just like, you can tell he's under pressure, yeah. which yeah. that is, like, that's a great version of John Ritter. The under pressure, just like, all right, that nervous smiling that he does and everything. Um, it does it very well. Mm-hmm. I like that John Ritter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just love that he has that like guilty conscience where he's like, I have to tell you the story. He's, he's like, all right. I guess I have like, to. I but have a lot of it's humorous, this. almost, right? It's yeah. like, well, I shouldn't have said anything. But since <laughs> I did, I have to tell you by law that this is where, you know, you don't have any pets, do you? Right. He's trying to keep a happy moment. He's just like, it's not so bad. It's all right. It's a house. You know, people died, but whatever. Yeah. We're good. He's well cast for this. I'll yes, say that, very yeah. so. He, he, made a, he made a career out of before... Jason Bateman did it being like the put upon stressed out businessman. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. Jason Bateman's taking that to a whole other level. Very true. But yeah, that that originally was John Ritter, and that very much is this character in this movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. He does it very well. But mm-hmm. what's the name of the second movie? Second Bobo. Story? Bobo. 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 Enter. Brian Cranston. <laughs> Holy Brian <Yay>! Cranston. <laughs> Cranston. We looked it up, so this was the same the year. The same year Malcolm in the Middle started. All so. right. And so. I remember him being on an episode of the X-Files. It must yes. have been right around mm-hmm. the same 
yes. same time, mm-hmm. which is the reason he got cast in Breaking Bad because Vince Gilligan was a writer on X Files. Uh, S- liked him in that episode and liked working with him. Thought of him for Breaking Bad. There you go. The but they Hollywood history. But Malcolm in the Middle must have seen this episode. And thought that <laughs> yeah, is they a had dad. A well, especially that because like dad. <laughs> it opens with him shaving with a straight razor, and yeah. in the opening credits, Malcolm in the Middle like he's shaving like his chest hair with. Oh a yeah, razor. yeah, that's <laughs> right. like yeah. Real, so some symmetry. A, there. So it was his shaving skills is what landed the role. <laughs> and like in the shaving scene, he's holding a newspaper, and like his whole character choice in this movie is reading the newspaper over and over again. Is there a universe where these are the same character? I, I hope he's, so. <laughs> He's a dad, man. He is. He's so dad. He's like, so dad. When he's running around, the, when he's running around with a shotgun later, he's got like his polo tucked into his, yeah. into his dad yeah. jeans with the so belt. Dad. His, he's so dad. I love it. That's great. <laughs> Perfect. Cranston. Fucking Brian. Perfect yes. dad. Perfect dad. That's the name for a movie that should star Brian Cranston. <laughs> I mean, isn't, isn't America's isn't, dad? Isn't there like a Robin Williams like world's, world's greatest, greatest dad? That's, that's yeah. a really world's sad movie, dad. though. Yeah. Oh, that's a real, real bummer of a movie. Oh. 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 It's not a comedy. It's no. not. <laughs> we'll rethink it. <laughs> well, Bobo is the story of a little girl, Brian Cranston's daughter, yes. who meets in her backyard a monkey named Bobo. Yes. Just a monkey. In a little red suit. Yeah, which we come to learn is an organ grinder suit. I yes. mean, yes. With a little hat. Little I like how fez. that never came back. I know. No, I'm really kind of disappointed. I'm like, okay, yeah, so it sits there. So we know nothing. Okay, well, we know nothing about this monkey, but. Oh, we might know everything about this monkey. This may have been the monkey of that era, which I think it was. I, is that I the monkey from Friends? Uh, I know it's the monkey from Monkey Shines, which okay. is George is Romero's, like, vodka-fueled nightmare from the 80s. <laughs> right. Uh, it's the same monkey from that, but I don't. I didn't see its other credits. I'll, I'll I, didn't, just, I didn't read its IMDb thoroughly what's enough. What's his real name? Boo. Boo! Nice. <laughs> Without any research, I'm going to say it's the Outbreak Monkey and also the monkey from Friends. From Friends, From yeah. Friends, yeah. Those what's are my three. Those are Marcel. Marcel, yes, that's uh, <laughs> he's a well-trained monkey, but yes. he's not the monkey from Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're saying because that was too early. I think yeah, so, yes. right. I think so. I don't know how old monkeys. Right. Grow right. To Later be. on, the monkey. We don't know. They could live to be like 150. Maybe. They could. I'm, I'm and always if... have the same great complexion. They do. Yeah. But oh, they always have that that's look. True. It's like I, I'm hoping the monkey from later years, like from uh, the Hangover. Oh yeah, and whatnot like is a relative of this yeah, monkey. Right. I like yeah. to think a lineage to these monkeys, like a Hollywood lineage, right? Yeah, monkeys. where this is like from down from generation to generation. The dynasty. Yes, this is the oh, monkey that's family. Boo's son. Yes, exactly. What was it? Boo. Yeah. Boo. Okay, yep. it is boo. Yep. Yeah. Like, there's that one dog that played like you know on Frasier, and I'm pretty sure he's like on Wishbone and all that. Yeah, the little Jack Russell. Yeah, yeah. Like, he had a long line. There was a movie about that dog. I forgot what it was called, but. You know, they play a lot of stuff. TV's best dog? I think so. something. Yeah. 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 America's it's a real bummer thing. when they like revive TV shows with with animals in them, though, because you're like, oh, that dog's probably dead now. Yeah, dog's yeah. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's many, always a real bummer. I was thinking that with the Gilmore through? Girls revival, he's barely alive. He's old as shit, but he's alive. that was really him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the same dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shocking. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> in season six Paul and seven, Gilmore Girls, there was a dog there brought a dog. in at the towards the end yeah. of the series, and then when they rebooted this year, the dog was still alive. They were How many years? Ten. Ten years. So that's impressive. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. They really uh, mm-hmm. did their all with the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> this is probably a good idea for a documentary. The dyna- family dynasty of Hollywood star animals. I'll bet it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. If not, we want you to make it and show it to us. <laughs> Please do. I yes. don't know if I want to see behind that curtain. It might be really sad. Well, probably, but that's <laughs> still great point. drama. That's why it's a great... Werner Her- Herzog will do it. Yeah. It'll be really oh, depressing. Be <laughs> yes. <laughs> that'd be great. <clears throat> Werner, talk about these dead animals. Go. <laughs> I once saw this monkey. <laughs> it's my Werner Herzog. Werner, <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> you're here? Werner. Like, <laughs> So this, uh, yeah, uh, the little girl makes friends with Bobo, yeah. who's a preternaturally smart monkey who loves the little girl and hates Brian Cranston. How could you hate? That? I, okay. I don't understand. And Brian Cranston's dog, by extension. Oh, yes, Max. Yeah. Max. Max. Who Every takes an instant Max. dislike to the monkey. It wasn't the dog from fucking uh, what's the killer? Uh, Ali Sheedy. The dog movie. Uh, man's best. Friend. Man's best friend. Wasn't oh, it Max? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was Max. Like every dog yeah, that's a killer or a of, friend was Max yeah, in, the, a lot of Max in the 90s dogs. at least. Except for the one from, uh, what the fuck was that, Corey Haim movie, Watchers. What was that dog's name? Was it Max? I may, It okay, might have been Max. Did you block that out? No, that was his Lost Boys dog. Okay. It was Max. Okay. Max. See, but that Max. No, that was, um, uh, that was the, the Alaskan dog. 
Oh, that's right. Max was the yeah. evil vampire. Nanook was the Nanook. Dog. That's Damn it. it, yeah. So it was probably... Well, we'll go back and listen yeah. to that episode. <laughs> yeah. Watchers episode. <laughs> no, don't. I'm sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we have better episodes. Don't do that. <laughs> so... Brian Cranston becomes obsessed with getting this wild animal out of the house. This is not unreasonable. I no, don't think. no, no. As as a father, I see his where he's going with this and be like, eh, I don't really want a monkey in the house. Like we don't know where this monkey's been. Right. Just because yeah. it's wearing a red suit doesn't right. mean it's not going to bite you and give you rabies yeah. or tear your eyes out. Yeah. Or tear yeah. your yeah. eyes out. Yeah. I was frankly a little pissed at the wife for not laying the smackdown a little more. Right. She should. There should be. She a, might as well have not been in this for how much. Right. She did. Very <laughs> Seriously. True. But there should have been a united front as far as. That monkey. It's just like, you yeah. know, just, I mean, yeah, they were fine playing for an afternoon, but you know, yeah. that monkey doesn't get something he wants. Monkey's gonna get pissed off. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, what parent even lets an afternoon happen with a strange monkey? Right. right. Have you right. seen like, Outbreak? Yeah, yeah. exactly. A, oh, yeah. a monkey in an organ grinder suit in your backyard in the suburbs is not a normal occurrence, and no. you shouldn't treat it like one. No. no. You don't know what but that monkey he's has. wearing pants. <laughs> I mean, I think know. that is kind of like the defining thing. Like, the monkey is wearing clothes. <laughs> yeah, so and, like, and, like, the guy in the first act takes its shirt off at one point and is <laughs> just wearing pants. Right. It's true. Yeah. But clearly, it's a civilized monkey. That's why we trust the monkey. Until right? it's sipping tea with the daughter. It's very civilized. Right. It's very right. yeah. It knows how to. Yeah. Max doesn't like it either. Max chases around the living room and, and destroys and half the destroys fucking the living, living room. room. And the thing takes like a fucking little bust of something and throws it on the dog's head. I know. That's yeah. Fucking monkey. Yeah. Ugh. This is what gives Brian Cranston the idea that this he monkey yells. might be <coughs> evil. Evil. Which he voices to the wife. He does. I just find it. I don't know. Evil. <laughs> it's like wow, which seems maybe a little bit uh, you know, too like, much. Yeah, too much too at that point. Yes, like, but okay. Maybe there's something wrong with the monkey, and you can express that. But evil. Yeah, hmm. he bites Brian Can- Cranston at one point. Yes. Which point? Point we were all hoping that Brian Cranston would turn into a monkey man. Yes, it oh would have. More Twilight Zone would have been if he gets bitten and then slowly starts turning into a monkey. And, and the, then monkey the monkey turns into Brian. Yes, Cranston and takes his place. Yeah. And he's like, "Yes, honey, you can keep the monkey." And, yeah. it's his, and it's her dad. Ah, oh, that would have been great. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Yeah. But I never knew that I wanted that to happen until I saw <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen. But what we got, I also liked. Yeah, because and it's probably what we got, better, folks. I mean, yes. the, what we got was probably we better. We got idea. Brian Cranston going to war with a monkey. Right. Which, yes. And uh, and uh, much like Obi-Wan Kenobi in Revenge of the Sith, this monkey always has the high ground. Always. Always. <laughs> Always has the high ground. Just, yeah. <laughs> up Climbing on it. Around on the Thanks like, for letting me set that up and knock it down in that horrible <laughs> <You did>. way. <laughs> <laughs> because it really is, it's Brian Cran- He's got a shotgun at this point because, you know, at a certain point, uh, I mean, he captures the monkey because yep. he's, after he gets bit, he's had enough with this. Yep. And so in the middle of the night, he gets his gloves on and goes and captures the thing and shoves it in the cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All to his daughter's, like, uh, breaking heart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then he he makes fun of it and puts it in the living room and says, "Max, watch that monkey." And then yep. he goes to bed, wakes up the next morning, goes to read his paper, and Max is dead, stabbed, stabbed to death. And there's little tiny monkey, little monkey footprints, footprints. <laughs> <laughs> little bloody monkey footprints. Uh, Who knew? Yeah. I, I just imagine that they couldn't get the monkey that day, and so they grabbed a baby and they're dipping his feet and little, and then just walked him across. <laughs> It was like, we got to get these footprints somehow. Well, there was one point that Brian Cranston got attacked by the monkey. The monkey's, you know, jumping on the back. As is going to happen in a story with, right. a, you know, wild monkey. But I was like, in some of the quick cutting, where the thing's gr- clawing at his face. Yes. I'm like, is that a little fake monkey paw? That's what I was going to Well, that's what I was going to say. We get yeah, a back scratcher stick. type yeah. thing. Yeah, it's on a stick. But we get our favorite thing, which is like people wrestling with uh, dummies. Oh, yeah. Dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they're just like, yeah. ah, ah, they got to crash into all the walls. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're whipping around, gives yeah. it movement. It's one of my favorite things. Yeah. And, and the fact that it was Brian Cranston. Just yeah. Right? Like serious, <laughs> the cake. dedicated Brian Cranston fighting with a monkey. Mm-hmm. That's glorious to me. Mm-hmm. That I love. Is, That's right. You don't get to see that when he's yeah. Heidelberg. Hey, Heisen, right. Heisen, Shut up. Heisen, Heisen, right? yeah. You don't get to talk like yeah. that. Uh, you don't. You, you watch you were close. nothing of this. <laughs> there must have been a little dip, bit of a dip in his career because he was on Seinfeld before this. He was. He was. And then the he dentist. did this. And then made a huge upswing, but he did. a little bit of a dip there in sure. the yeah. career path. Well, but even like Malcolm in the Middle was like the boom, and then the Breaking mm-hmm. Bad yeah. man. Mm-hmm. I think I had a career. He did. We say in past tense, what's he doing now? <laughs> Trumbo? Why him? 
Why the James Franco why? movie. Oh, uh, Sneaky Pete's coming uh, out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he looks he looks pretty good in that. Actually. Godzilla two. Oh, that's right. He's dead. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, spoilers. He's just. Yeah. My bad. Well, he uh, again comes to. I mean, he's not like a. His character isn't completely irrational in this movie. At this point, oh. he says, "I got to go take care of this monkey, so I'm going to go to the pound and hire." Well, call first, animal control. Yeah. Well, first he like what he does when he finds that Max has been killed is that he bags him up and brings him to the garage. I mention this because we get a little repeat on this <laughs> later yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. So he bags Max up and brings him to the garage. We do, we're do. we all questioning, like, what's he doing putting the dog in the garage? He, like, that? puts stuff on top of it. He, like, covers right. it up. Right, like yeah. he's going to hide it. He does end up burying the dog later, but it's kind of weird that he just bags him well, up. Well, he was doing it, we find out, to hide it from his wife and, and daughter. Yeah. Well, specifically the daughter. I think he was yeah. going to tell the wife at some point that, you know. They're going to notice the dog is gone. Yeah. Do you know what that animal did? <laughs> yeah, but at this point, the little brat's so focused on the monkey, she's not thinking about the dog. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. care about it. She even said, can't we just put Max outside and keep Damn. the monkey yeah. inside? Cold. Like, right? Always want that new shiny thing. Cold. Really Don't old. they live in Tampa? <laughs> it's, it feels like, yeah. This is like a Florida Whatever. residence. Yes. It was like the Tampa town. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That yeah. shopping center he was at, that was real rough. Yeah. Yeah. So he calls Animal Control. He and, goes to Animal Control. And who is it, Holly? Enter 90s favorite WCW wrestler, Buff Bagwell. Buff the stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're like, if anybody's got a chance against this monkey, it's, it's the stuff. Be... It's Buff Bagwell. Yeah. Obviously. It's fantastic. So he goes over to the house with the his old catching rod. Yeah, yeah. We call it in the last little thing. collar rod, snare yeah. pole. I think. Yeah, snare yeah, pole. yeah, yeah, yeah. Snare yeah. pole. He's like, "Hey, you wait outside. Give Which, me a little bit of time to catch this little fucker." I had to point out, Brian <laughs> Cranston. The fucker. Yeah, Brian Cranston yeah. gave him a ride to his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the weirdest things. Like, don't you? Well, your animal control. Don't, don't you have, have a truck? A, don't you have a van or something? Yeah. Equipment of some sort to handle and this. Brian Cranston paid him a hundred dollar bill up front and said there was another hundred in it for him if he kills the monkey. So this and is still, a bad This guy deal. still talked him into giving him a ride. <laughs> yeah. like, How's he getting this thing yeah. back to animal control? He's like, now you got to give him a ride yeah. back. It's like, yeah. all right, but so I don't, this was a you back alley mine. transaction, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Brian Cranston's the one getting taken for a ride here. Yeah, <laughs> did him boom. I see what you did there. I like that. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's unfortunate. It's Buff, unfortunate for Buff. Buff Bagwell is no match for Bobo. Poor Buff. <laughs> yes, yeah. Brian Cranston's bearing the dog, and he's like, "It's been a little time. I'm gonna go check on Buff." He goes inside. What does he find? He finds a human pincushion. So, oh my like, God. The monkey yeah. has taken every single knife in the drawer and somehow gotten the drop on Buff Bagwell. <laughs> Not <laughs> likely. Colin says that knowing nothing <laughs> about Buff Bagwell like, right is now. It, wait, it, is it Biff? Biff? No, it's Buff, Buff Bagwell. Bagwell. <laughs> so, <laughs> stabbed to death like stabbed 67 death. times. Oh. Lying in the kitchen. So what do you do? You call the cops. No, 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 no. No, you grab the murder weapon. And freak out is what you do. Well, okay, it, but it, well, okay. And the way the camera pans, it makes you think it's going to be like strangled with a snare pole because you see the corn, like the end of the snare pole sticking out around the island in the kitchen. You pan around and like, and they're all perfectly straight in his chest, mm-hmm. too, just like a block of kitchen knives. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what mm-hmm. it's like. Yeah, yeah. Well, that monkey is very, you know, like uh, orderly monkey. Precise. You know, he got him like yeah. once and then it's like, yeah, yeah. 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 stuck him the rest of the times. Yeah. It's like he played darts with it or something. Like, <laughs> throwing knives or something. It was weird. That has Poor to be buff. what it was, right? Right. Yeah. He's a, right. He's a trick see monkey. It, but he's like, maybe he's like he's up like, on the ca- he's up on the cabinets throwing them at him. Yeah. He does like to sit on top of everything. Yes, he does. <laughs> True. Uh, always yeah. on top of something. He gets the drop on everybody except for one person later on. But before we get there, mm. okay. So instead of calling the cops, Brian Cranston. Puts Buff Bagwell in a garbage bag, <laughs> takes him out the garage. He's bagged Bagwell. He yeah. did. He did. Oh, that was bad. Okay. But I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to bury him in the backyard, too. Because that's what you do. Because how else could you explain how this guy got killed in your house? I don't know. But it's 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 almost proto. If you've ever seen Breaking Bad, it's it's uh, when he, he plays Walter White, sometimes he gets into very serious situations, but he's kind of a buffoon, so it leads to the comedy in the show. This kind of felt like a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. Mm. He's being very serious about a man who was just killed in his house, but then you go back to the joke of him having bagged up Bagwell and pulling him into his garage. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially yeah. those first two seasons when like Walt and Jesse are first getting to know each other, and there's yeah. a lot of awkward moments like that. Yes. That's definitely what it felt. A lot like. of yes. fumbling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's always because it's always the the comedy comes from um, him as that character playing it so serious, thinking he's such a badass, and then getting into situations where he's just kind of bumbling mm-hmm. at some points. It's very funny. But that was kind of the 
vibe we got in this part. He's oh, yeah. very serious about trying to kill a monkey in his house, <laughs> and he's bagging dudes and pulling them into his garage. That no one else believes is a threat except right. him. Like, well, because he hasn't told anybody else that what's been going on. Yeah. I mean, that's other than like that monkey. I gotta get that monkey. So at this point, I think Brian Cranston's character loses his fucking mind. I suppose oh, yeah. you would. You got a killer monkey running around. So he gets this is where he gets the shotgun, and yeah. he's like gonna stand guard and wait up at night, waiting for this monkey to show up. He puts a trap out the backyard, also. The, yeah, right. The bear trap. Loops, which the monkey uses to triggers it in the middle of the night. So he, so Brian Cranston goes yeah. outside, and the monkey can get back. That's in Brian the house. Cranston's yeah. trap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> smart little bastard. Yep. But around here, so I think when he gets back inside the house, he goes up to the bedroom. So we get into the oblique angles. Is it obli- is oblique? Dutch angles. Dutch angles. Yeah. But they're oblique or opaque or something like that. Because something is off. With something the- is off. It was a real big trademark of the 90s, which it is really rubbing was. off on this Just movie a lot. Just Battlefield Earth. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. There's not a straight angle in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> For no good goddamn Maybe reason. not a straight actor. We don't know. Oh, oh, John Travolta was oh, in that movie, I'm just saying. Oh, Church of Scientology is going to come after whoa, you now. Shit. Who was the bad guy? In it? So. Was it like Forrest Whitaker? Forrest Whitaker is yeah, in that yeah. movie. That's and Barry thought. Pepper is in it, too. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, that might, Lord. Should that movie show up on the front? Yeah, it You should. know what? I think so. It really so. should. That's not a bad idea. Right, well, I have not seen jotting it. that one down for some time in the future. <laughs> okay. All right, but he <laughs> discovers Heidelberg, Heisenberg, Heisenberg discovers. <laughs> just keep going. His wife. Has oh, no. been murdered. The useless Her, wife slashed <laughs> yeah. in the bed. So at this point, with the uh, straight razor, right? Because he finds oh, was it. And it? F- yeah, and he oh, fingers the that. murder weapon again. Okay, yeah. but that was what ke- made me think that, like, okay, this whole story is going to be about how this guy is crazy, right? And yes. thinks that there's a monkey, but he's actually responsible for all the murders because. I mean, when we go back later, when the cops investigate this, the you know whole series of murders, they're going to find his DNA is all over everything. Yeah, fingerprints. So it's like it was actually him committing these, thinking about. No one will ever know about that monkey, monkey. right? But that's not the case. No, it actually is a serial killer monkey. Sure is. Who, God knows how long it's been doing this before. It like killed some family, then it ended up in their backyard, and then it's going to go off and do it again after this. It's just the neighborhood murder monkey. I mean. It's not a thing. Yeah. No, yeah. It's not a trope or anything. Yeah. It should be. Can we start it? Yeah. The milkman, the kid that mows everyone's lawn, yeah. murder monkey. Yeah. yeah. But he goes searching through his house for the shotgun again after he finds mm-hmm. his wife. Pulls that shotgun. He knows out where to go look for it. He and knows. He goes, where does he go? He goes to his daughter's room. He's like, where is it? Mm-hmm. And that classic Cranston yell. Oh, yeah. Now we've got Crazy Cranston, and it's fantastic. Oh, Crazy Cranston. I love it. That yell. Oh. That's so good. Yeah. As he's pulling through everything. Wait, wasn't the monkey like in the bed? That it was, was like, earlier. Well, no, like, he goes to his daughter's room. It was room. like creepy sitting on t- It was like perched on, like, above, her. above her. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think when he went to get it with a cage, it was creepily. Right, yeah. Right. So it many screams. scenes of there was like that, going right. in. Yeah. Then it screams yeah. and wakes the daughter up and she's all disturbed. That's when it was creeping above, uh, crouching above the bed. And there was that great stuffed animal fake out, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was mm-hmm. nice. That's like, yeah. that's like, and see, that's another 80s trope of like the monsters and the stuffed animals, yes. like E.T. and everything. Mm-hmm. That's an that's 80s exactly trope. Right. Yeah. This movie's full of 80s tropes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It really is. They need to bring some of that shit back. I think so. Yeah. But he does. He goes to his daughter's room. Yells at her, where's the monkey? Is this where it jumps on him and starts attacking well, it's him? In the, yeah, because it's in the closet. Yeah. He goes into the closet. Oh, in the closet. Right, right, right. right. It jumps out. Classic closet. But then he knocks the bureau over on top of the monkey in one that of the greatest shots. And <laughs> got the, the monkey struggling to get out. He yeah. wasn't crushed to death. He's no. struggling to get and out. He's just trapped from the waist down. So the monkey's trying to pull out. <laughs> Daughter sees this. Is like, Dad's gone crazy. He came into the room, said, your mom's dead. Yeah. Obviously, it looks like Dad did it. She gets the shotgun and blows Dad away. Oh, shit. Leaving murder monkey out to... Uh, you know, ravage the neighborhood because apparently the daughter goes nuts. Daughter goes nuts, tells the story to the cops, and then never says another word. And thank God she did because otherwise we wouldn't have we wouldn't John know the Ritter's story. Right. Version John Ritter's the way I heard it. Yeah, as he says. So that brings us to house number two is down. This couple does not want to live there. No. So we go to house number three, where they're like, nobody died in this house, right? At this point, they're getting wise. Right. The idea that you know, like he's taking us around <laughs> places like where something's happening in this neighborhood. Yeah. Nobody died in this one, right? It's like, oh, no, no, no. No, died. no one died here. Nothing like that. <laughs> no. But what happened in this house? Wait, story is called. The Granny Killer. 
The Granny Killer. This yeah. one I thought would be Colin's favorite because it involves a, a serial killer and it's almost like kind of a little black glove killer-ish. A little bit, like at the beginning. Just a little yeah. bit. But it's a serial killer, which I was like, I'm like, oh, good. Something that's not like weird Twilight zone It's mm-hmm. actually just a serial killer story. Yeah. Which I liked. But we a young man. Well, this is like classic Alfred Hitchcock Presents kind of yes. stuff that they're yeah. setting mm-hmm. up here. I mean, you know. Yeah, the... Uh, I. A young guy shows up at a psychiatrist's office. Mm -hmm. It's a female psychiatrist. She's alone in the building. Everybody else has left. Uh, They also have uh, Chekhov's, what do you call that? The... uh, um, What is that called? Yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah. It's like the pointy thing you put receipts on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Which she slams the receipt no, down earlier. No, that's what that's called. That's not yeah. foreshadowing at all. Just well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. If you have the, whatever, the Chekhov's gun, you don't bring it up in the first act. Very good, yeah. If you mm-hmm. if you reveal a gun in the first act, by the third act, it yeah. has to be That used. was pretty good, yeah. because it didn't really draw attention to itself. Right. It was just like, this is a thing that she's got, and I've right. seen this on other mm-hmm. desks. I think mm-hmm. it drew attention to itself. Oh, okay. the, there I was, a, so. there was <laughs> The sound was upped on it. It was, it was decidedly she, sharp, too. Like It was like, you should see this and know this. Yeah. So the setup my, my first thought was, I don't know how many psychiatrists have pointy things just sitting around in there. Oh, right. uh, <laughs> true. She had many. She had that. She had the letter opener. Like yeah, she was she, ready yeah. To she's kind of a point. terrible psychiatrist. I always wonder if like psychiatrists watch these things and just go like, that's a terrible version of a psychiatrist. Because <laughs> oh, they if, do. She didn't do anything, any kind of medical or therapy or anything. It's basically she sits there as he tells this story. Mm-hmm. This kid believes that he is seeing psychic impressions of a serial killer who was wearing a granny mask going around the city preying on women and he is seeing these visions and is troubled by them and wants mm-hmm. to talk to the psychiatrist yes. for an ulterior motive right mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is all the setup so you got the ways that this can go is either the kid is the serial killer has been blacking out and then he's going to turn on her in the end because she's alone and everybody else is left. She's the serial killer because she was making sure everybody was gone. So when he comes in yes. and starts telling this story, she can kill him. Which is what I thought for most of this, that he went in there like to confront her. It's like, I had another premonition. I found out who it was. It was you. Yeah. That's where I thought it was going for most of the time. I did too at the beginning, but it was that phone call that she makes where the her receptionist calls mm-hmm. her. And says, you know, like, I, you know, I got to go. And she's like, wait, can't you stay for just I'm like, if she was trying to clear the building, I'm like, that's the moment where you know which way this story is going to go. Yes. But, uh, or the third option, I guess, is what we end up going with where he is actually trying to, he is having premonitions. Yeah. He's having the premonitions and he sees that she was a victim. And so he's trying to stop the, Mm -hmm. the murder. Yes. All the while building him up as being very suspicious. Yeah. This whole time. The link to this is that, or to the rest of the story, is that he's the son of somebody who lived in the house that they're looking at. Right? Yes. The parent, yeah, that was his house. So nobody got murdered there. Right. But he was having premonitions of people getting murdered by the granny killer. Behind the video store, in his high school. Was there another one? And eventually his ex-girlfriend. Oh, his ex-girlfriend, yes. Where he finds the head. Yeah. Yes, she gets stalked. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Was also, that? as uh, Holly pointed out, to connect the six degrees of shirtless separation he here. He was shirtless. Uh, he was shirtless, and also the psychiatrist is the bra lady from Seinfeld, so yes, she, she was is. shirtless in and Seinfeld. And Brian the girl Cranston. took her top off in the pool. Yep, right. yep. she did. Mm-hmm. Everybody's shirtless in this entire Brian mm-hmm. Cranston was also in Seinfeld. Yeah, mm-hmm. Seinfeld mm-hmm. is yep. the key. Seinfeld's, yep. Seinfeld's the key. I'm sure, I'm sure John Ritter was on Seinfeld at some point, right? Probably. I think. Probably. Everybody I was on at least one episode of Seinfeld. Yeah, the odds are in our favor. Mm-hmm. Well, the movie is packed with, like, like even the blonde girl in the first story. I'm like, I've seen her, and so I haven't looked mm-hmm. it up yet. But everybody who shows up in these things, the husband, I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I just have can't too. place them. They're, like, yeah. solid TV actors, mm-hmm. right, which is yeah. why it feels like it's kind of, like, on that low, you know, TV yes. budget, you know. Because at that point, everybody was kind of TV at that point. Everybody in it. They weren't really movie stars. I mean, yeah, they did movies. John Ritter's probably the biggest star of this one. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh definitely. yeah. He's but everybody the, else is like mostly TV. Yeah. But the in the story, the kid ends up uh, impaling himself uh, as he's trying to reach across the desk. She's going for the letter opener. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Because she's trying to defend herself. He ends up impaling himself. He says he's trying to help the, her. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
the thing. What are we calling the thing? We're all like doing the motion the for spike, it right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the spiky thing. Doing, yeah. <clears throat> you know, the big spike. It's just a big on. metal spike on your desk that you shove receipts on when yeah. you're done. I don't, but that yeah, takes this, forever yeah. to say. It really does. Yeah. I just want to do the motion, yeah, just, have it know. come across audio wise, <laughs> and be done with it. But yeah. we can't do it. So he impales himself on the thing that you have on your desk that you <laughs> impale all your receipts on. <laughs> and oh, staggers God. down the hall, and, you know, she's Following trying her. to get out. Uh, she thinks know, he's the, the killer at this point. Well, right, yeah. As you would, and he's all bloody and blah. And it turns out in the elevator is the granny masked killer. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is, I was kind of bummed by the way that it ended. It was kind of anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess for the twist of it. Right. You know, being like, he was trying to save you. Yes. You know. It's like the the beginning of Urban Legend with uh, Brad Dorff. Just tying it all back around. There Sean. it is. Yeah. Very nice. See? Just getting it in that there. That was about 50 minutes ago. That we made it yeah. I know, right? I'm just trying to make the circle, man. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get there. Not bad. <laughs> so that brings us to the final segment of the wraparound story. Indeed. Tell us what's going on here with this whole thing with John Ritter and the... Well, he's not going to make this sale. We can, we can see that. Why is that, that. important? He needs to make this sale today. He's on a he's on a he's on a deadline. He's on a clock. He's on a deadline. And he's, all we know is that his boss is not fucking around. Apparently his boss has his wife and son captive. This is mm-hmm. a shocking revelation. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Mm-hmm. This is their sales incentive plan that he's been alluding to the entire time. Yeah. Now we're gonna make you rich, you sell houses, or we're gonna kill your family. Mm-hmm. Essentially yeah. is where that's going. Yeah. So he gets a phone call from his boss. I always thought this was going to get nothing up to this point, I guess, has led to it being supernatural. I was going to th- uh, thought like his uh, his uh, boss is like the devil or something. Yeah. That's where I thought it was going. Or something yeah. Like yeah. To make the money and everything. And then he also had to get people to like buy into it and everything. And mm-hmm. those were the sales he was trying to make. But no, it really is just kind of a flesh and blood. Hey, we have your family. You better sell some houses in this neighborhood. And so he kind of gets a little more, de- he gets way more desperate as the family has decided that they- Make me an offer! They don't, <laughs> they don't want me an offer now! It's great. I can't, I can't describe the John Ritterness of the make me an offer! You're going to buy a house from someone, why not me? Yeah, yeah. That's when he totally flips out and becomes John Ritter. Right? Yeah. And they want to, and the couple wants to leave and they're just, and he, what, he's got his pen and he just yeah. starts stabbing the husband, taking him out right in the neck. And yeah. as he's stabbing him, he's like talking about real estate facts. It's like it is. It's great. <laughs> loan rates and shit. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love yeah, that I juxtaposition it's so where it's just like I'm murdering someone, but you can get low mortgage and a loan that will you can pay off over time. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. This and the wife is begging to be made into a soundboard. Like there needs to be a soundboard for this, right? <laughs> that would be good. Well, there you go. There's yeah. a little project. Right. Where's the what you call it? Um, e bombs world. Get on that. Oh, a soundboard God. right now. Yeah, the wife like flees out, gets in yes. the car, and drives away. Yeah, but this is where the full scope of whatever kind of weird shit's going on in this neighborhood yes. reveals itself, because people are being murdered in every yard. Because some yeah. dude runs over a cat's head with a lawnmower. Yep. Mm-hmm. Some old ladies taking out her trash, and there's like a leg sticking out of the, the garbage can. There's a dead guy spiked in a pool as she drives by. Yeah, the monkey returns. The monkey. There's a Jumps marital dispute shield. that ends in gunshots. Gunshots right out <laughs> There's the front. an explosion. <laughs> there's an explosion. <laughs> Car, the <laughs> car like <laughs> runs over some guy or whatever. Yes. Flips over the yeah. head of a car. She's driving through and figuring out that this is a uh, terror track. It's a terror, it's a terror tract. tract. It's yeah. a neighborhood from hell. Apparently, Cute. this subdivision is the same one from uh, Maximum Overdrive at the beginning. The yes. killing yeah. montage of Maximum Overdrive, where there's sprinklers kill the kid and yes. everything. Mm-hmm. This, is, yeah. this is like the next street over from that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just madness, wholesale madness. Oh, and it's wonderful. She yeah. drives yeah. off yeah. hysterical. Mm-hmm. And we were laughing hysterically. Oh, it was yeah. great. Oh, yeah. It's a great reveal, especially yeah. with the explosion. That oh, was wonderful. Well, I think it was like the top. energy of that, like that final John Ritter, you know, him just going absolutely bug shit crazy. Bug shit. Like kind of carries you right over yes. to the. And he gets yeah. to the window and he's like, make me an offer. It's yeah. so good. Bloody hands and everything. Oh, it can't, enough can't be said about John Ritter in this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He plays it perfectly, I think. Just we that nervousness him, yeah. and that sweatiness and just, it's very good. Yeah. Laughing till the end, till the credits uh, ran out on us. Yeah, because the only place we could find this was on YouTube. That's oh, right. no, you yeah. should spend 70 bucks and buy the... <laughs> yeah, 
the wanna... official double yeah. Yeah. double DVD. <clears throat> All right, so does that bring us to the end of Terror Track? Do you have any other stray observations? or I have, like, the strayest of observations. Did you guys know there's an episode of Three's Company where you can see John Ritter's testicles? What? Yeah. So no, what no. yeah. There's a picture. I, I had it pulled up on my phone. I can't <laughs> uh, I'll look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it. I mean, I won't look away. There's, like, he's wearing, like, those, like, 70s sure, the, short yeah, shorts. Right, 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 and, like, he right, sits yeah. down in the bed and just, like, pops her head. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on TV. I mean, either you can show me or I'm going to look <laughs> yeah, it up after yeah, the podcast. Yeah, it was on TV. So, We're going to have to see uh, that. This needs to happen. Was company live or was it pre-recorded? Or they just it was pre-recorded, but he said, it, but he said um, when they like asked him about it, he said he told them to do one version, edit and one not, because sometimes you want nuts and sometimes you don't. <laughs> uh, oh, damn. This is some John Ritter nut. Oh, shut up. Damn. And you know nobody was wearing underwear oh, back then. Yeah. Nobody. Underwears this? and bras are gone. Uh, Reddit. Oh. The place that has everything. <laughs> yeah. Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. front page of the internet. Yep. But I think I actually like heard about it in a cracked article years ago of like things that like I think it was in the same article with like the guy in Teen Wolf has his dick out in this bleachers oh, yeah. at the end. The like, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. That, it was an article about stuff like that, I think. Sure. So, like yeah. things yeah. in movies you may never have noticed <laughs> yeah. this before. Genitals like, there you was missed. Dick in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And the back to the future and all that other yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That kid just had to, he go, just had to go to the bathroom, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just That's had to go to the bathroom. Saying. Nothing sexual about it. Genitals you might have missed in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yes, that's there a BuzzFeed yeah. article if I ever heard one. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. Terror Tract. Right, so yeah. yeah. Terror Tract. Terror Tract. Terror Tract. <laughs> Not to be confused with Terror Train. There's so many Terror, terror on tour. Uh, oh. So we want to summon our male demon. That's Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. Igor, can you get me another another beer, please? Thank you. Thanks, Igor. We should get him a little little, or, little organ grinder outfit. Oh, I think you think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think so. Cute the little fez. fez. Yeah, <laughs> a little tiny jacket. Aww. Aww, are you okay with it, Igor? Igor. <laughs> And there he goes. I don't goes. think you like that idea. Well, we'll yeah. do it anyway. All right. uh, Igor brings us in the mail. You can write in, and we hope that you do. Become part of the Freak Show family. You can write to us on uh, Facebook. You can find us where facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also write to us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or the old-fashioned way. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And we will read your comments on the air. Is it Yahoo or Gmail? It's Yahoo. Yahoo. Is it? Good yeah. God, man. It's been like 200 years. <laughs> I, I never say it. I never pay attention. I don't pay attention. What do you think I'm here for? He's like, I don't need to write I in. Don't know. I, I got the Twitter down. I don't need anything else. <laughs> you know where you can also comment? Is on YouTube. We're on YouTube. We oh, post damn. our entire shows on YouTube. Maybe that's how you're listening to us right now. Please don't curse us out in Portuguese. That's right. Uh, or Alex. Do. That's fine. Whatever. I mean, we sure. can't read those on the air, though, because we don't speak. Portuguese. Portuguese. It would it's be kind of, yeah. It sounds like we're casting spells or something, probably. Um, <laughs> so, Alex wow. Brewis writes in and says, uh, <laughs> Yup, that's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, we right. have mail. <laughs> Alex Brewis writes in and says, He's one of the few, one of the proud. He says, Hang in there. He enjoys our content. So there you go. Oh, just, uh, hey. uh, Who's yeah. this? Wait, what's his name? Alex Bruis. Oh, thank you, Thanks, sir. Alex. Or uh, ma'am. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I, I can't tell which Stop one Stop talking, are. Sean. <laughs> uh, so about, about tonight's movie, thank Terror you. Tract, G-Money writes in. G-Money. And he says, I've had this on a double disc with Cherry Falls forever. USA was so reliable for quality trash and child's play marathons. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. I agree. What was it? USA was USA up all night. USA right? up, all yeah. night. up all Hell night. Hell yeah. Even yeah, even not up all night. USA was USA was big on playing. I mean, Child's Play, Tremors, Critters. Yeah, back they, in the day, USA was like the movie marathon channel. It was kind of a place to go for horror, like yeah. kind of the maybe the cheaper stuff, but it was a place to go for it. When was TNT and Monster Vision like in the mix? That was after Up All Night. Uh, I think so. It felt like it to me. Maybe it overlapped at some point, but yeah. it felt like uh, 90s. Uh, definitely 90s. Up All Night was, are we talking the uh, Gilbert Gottfried or are we talking um, Rhonda Shear? Up All Night. 
I'm saying words Colin does not understand. <laughs> nobody I thought know? they were both on at the same time. There's nobody know. Any, well, I don't know. The, I don't know the time frame. Oh, but Rhonda Shear. Yeah. You know, yeah. We all know what I'm talking about. Here? Yeah. I just don't know it was Rhonda Shear first, and then Gilbert got. Oh, okay. he did the later ones. Oh, all right. So she would have been 90s. It was. I think it was early so 90s. But the USA up 90s? all night. Oh. Yeah. All night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was horror every week. Uh, yeah, I mean, or like horror, sci-fi, cult stuff like that. It felt like mostly horror, but I'm pretty sure it was sci-fi cult. I think it may have just been horror. I know uh, Monster Vision. That was yeah. That was mm-hmm. sci-fi cult horror and yeah. everything. Uh, Hopefully chosen by Joe Bob Briggs. Joe Bob Briggs. Oh yeah. Give you the rundown of everything. Oh, no, they need to bring yeah. that. Those back. That's an days. education. Those were the days. Yeah. Uh, so about our uh, previous episode, Dead Heat, Chris ah, Huddleston dead heat. writes in, <laughs> dead heat. and he says that Joe Piscopo has said over the last couple of years that he regrets getting into bodybuilding. What do you think about the idea that being fit somehow makes funny people less funny and people thinking overweight comedians should lose weight? Should Ryan Reynolds trade weights for donuts? He did a movie. He like, did where a he played both. movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did both. <laughs> Just friends. Just friends, yeah. I mean, I, does Joe Piscopo regret bodybuilding because of all the steroids he took? That feels like where that was going. Yeah. Well, do you think that I, it makes funny people are less funny if they're buff? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think. Look at Chris Pratt or Dwayne Johnson. Right? The Rock's pretty yeah. funny he's, for doesn't being a big guy. He's getting more ripped than that. Chris Pratt was really chubby on Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. and now he's fit, and he, I think he's still funny. I think back then, I think if you were a big muscle-bound person, they didn't write the good comedy for you. Yeah. They made, I, I, yeah, it was it, awkward. It, I mean, it was awkward, like dumb twins com- or right. Yeah, you were meant to be stupid. Or, yeah, yeah. Don't stupid yeah. Do not talk bad about twins. I swear to God, if you do that again. <laughs> you didn't talk bad about it. I was just saying, that's okay. how you write just those parts, sure. right? As yeah. oh, yeah. If you're big and muscle-bound, you're stupid. You're stupid, right. I think that's it. Like, there was... That was kind of the They're conception still doing that, of it. right? There's mm-hmm. kindergarten t- cop two with uh, Dolph Lundgren yeah. coming soon, mm-hmm. or out now. There's know. also uh, Baywatch is coming. But yeah, I think I th- it's a little smarter it, than. Yeah, no, I think it's changed enough in the past. You know, it's thirty I think years it's funnier, or so, right? To that, be a big guy and be funny. Like I think mm-hmm. it's funnier to be that. You're not looked at as stupid. You can actually do the comedy at that mm-hmm. point. Mm. Terry Crews as well. Terry Crews is fucking Terry hilarious. Crews is hilarious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Terry Crews is hilarious. So I think yeah. it's changed over mm-hmm. the years. But back then, if you were big and muscular, you were not. Uh, you were dumb funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, those I think mm-hmm. that's what it was. But yeah. That's probably why he regretted it. Right. So he was kind of a meathead back in then because he was muscle bound and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dom Cree writes in about yeah. Dead Heat, the movie that he chose, and says, "Call me crazy, but I think the final stage burn makeup on Treat Williams is also." Sammy Kerr inspired. Only Colin would know the answer to this one. I see what you're what doing do you there, think, Dom, Colin? and I appreciate it. And sure, why not? He's burned on half his face. We were saying during the show that it looked like he was inspired by the Terminator since yes. the director was the editor on Terminator. Yes, but, mm-hmm. but I appreciate that, Dom. <laughs> I appreciate that <laughs> shout out. you a bone right yeah. there. He's just like, Colin wants to talk about trick or treat some more. <laughs> there you go. Uh huh. Just you wait. As long as it's not fucking repo, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to the end of the mailbag segment. That means we're going to do our final thoughts. Each one of us is going to get a chance to sound off on what we thought of Terror Track and whether we recommend it to you. Are we all going to agree? Is it going to be a split decision? Is it going to be three on one? We'll find out. The suspense Starting is killing me. Colin. Oh, Jesus. It's me. I'm up front. First what again. did you think about Terror Track? Surprisingly, Sean, I oh. liked it. Oh! <laughs> yeah, no, Damn. I know. I was like watching the trailer. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> they are getting me to watch a, a TV movie. See, I this is the thing. Like, I've always been like, oh man, once the Saturday Night Freak Show goes, like you can tilt it too far, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like all the well, I guess we already did it, right? It, I think yeah. we snuck it in there with Sharknado on a technicality because it played in a movie theater. Yes, at one point we're I like, think well, we tilted, Sharknado. I think we tilted the other way first. And I think now we're getting into, we're tilting back to the correct uh, stream of movies we should be in. To me. Yeah, but I mean, like, it opens a door, right? If you go with TV yes. movies, then you got your Piranacondas and your... Yeah. Uh, Piranaconda. One day. Yeah. Just because it's been mentioned for many years. Yeah, we can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, Never probably been, not. No, yeah. I don't want to see that movie. I've so, seen it. Don't. Oh, right. Don't right. pick Sorry. it. Don't Sorry, pick it. There are some things that are just way, way, way too bad. <laughs> yeah. No. But uh, I guess that was my fear going into it. And like you're seeing John Ritter and I mean, I'm sorry. I, you know, I know John Ritter from 
it. That's, you know, I mean, I, I yeah. know he did, you know, uh, Skin Deep, I think I saw, and I saw uh, Three's Company, and, you know, I mean, I saw these things, but I was never really a fan. Mm. I thought he was a fine, dramatic actor in It, and then it was like, you know, seeing him in the trailers to this, it was like, eh. but it turns out, like, John Ritter you is doing like a Dom the- DeLuise impression? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Brando? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little higher pitched than yeah. Dom DeLuise. You gotta go, eh, very good. Tom DeLuise, are you here? Oh my God, <laughs> you just walked through the door. I knew I could do this many impressions. <laughs> um, He's dead. But yeah, I was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly all dead. But that doesn't matter anymore. Now you can bring everybody back to life true, from the yeah. radio That's or true. In, When do we uh, get the CG arts? Dom DeLuise? Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah, who's knocking on the door to his estate? Um, but yeah, it does play out like, uh, you know, I suppose Tales from the Crypt, uh, like a, a higher end kind of in the quality of its writing, right? I've seen a lot of Tales from the Dark Side episodes or mm. whatever that were worse than this. This one actually seems like either of these guys, I assume the writers, you know, wrote five or six stories and picked the best ones instead of going, you know, we're just going to write these three stories or they're just that good. You know, in which case you figured they'd be doing more stuff, I guess. You yeah. Know? Right. <clears throat> um, but as a horror movie, I mean, I can see why it has called following because if you did see this once a while ago and you thought favorably of it, you know, like, you know, I want to see it again and where is it? You want to see if it lives up to, you know, what you remember. Having not seen it before the first time through, it's like, you know, each one of the stories I think worked. I was engaged enough to try and be figuring out like where they were headed or what mm-hmm. twists they were going to take. I mean, it's always a good uh, mark of a yes. quality anthology movie. I mean, I'm not saying it's like a creep show or you know anything. Like Is it? You know, I would recommend it. Maybe not so much that you need to go seek it out, spend seventy bucks on a Definitely on a not. DVD or anything. <laughs> no. But it's more like if it comes across your field of view, if it pops up on Netflix or, you know, some streaming service and you have the choice of this or some other, you know, thing that we <laughs> haven't recommended that you watch in weeks past, uh, pick this one. You know, you could do worse than actually giving this one a shot. So uh, I would say I would recommend it. Sean. Damn. Did you see that uh, Tales from the Dark Side is being released? Like it was on, the, it's in on DVD in Walmart. I see it every now and, the and again. The movie? Oh, the show. The show. Travis like, has got it. Yeah, oh, did he, he get it? Yeah, I, was saying, I keep seeing there. it every every now and again after you guys have been talking about it. Mm-hmm. It was odd. Um, Terror Tract. Um, I, I had fun with this movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really loved, um, specifically, like you said, I think all the stories do work. Um, like you said, you're you're uh, you're in it. You're, you are trying to figure out like where these stories are going. I think the first one... Uh, is probably the weakest of them all, and that's not saying it's uh, bad at all, but because it had a few very effective moments, especially the husband being in bed for the mm-hmm. jump scare and whatnot. And um, did I ruin the ending for you? I did call, you? I called that. Did one. you? Did you? Is that the one you actually called where <laughs> yeah. the guy where the lover was going to be outside the door? Yeah, yeah. I yelled at Colin for that one. Yeah, but sorry. Because I'm just like, really? oh, it makes sense. You didn't see that coming. I didn't. All right, fine. I'm not the smartest man in the world. I didn't, I didn't get it before it happened. I can be still be surprised by movies, Holly. Okay. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, to, but to me, that was maybe kind of the most standard of them. Um, it, uh, for me, it really got better, especially when we got to Brian Cranston fighting a monkey. Oh, God, yes. That's, I, like I think I said it last week, it's, I didn't know I wanted it until I got it. And it was... Uh, yeah. Is uh, highly enjoyable. Um, is that the one you're going to remember? That's like the Zuni fetish doll one. You it really go, is. That's right. the movie where Brian Cranston fights the monkey. Right. Yeah. In Trilogy of Terror, what do you really remember besides the Zuni fetish doll and Karen Black at the end? <laughs> yes, it will she be was Brian. A teacher Cran- in a college at something. No, I don't remember. Yeah, it's just no. Because I'm having a hard time remembering the third one. What was the third one? Wasn't the oh yeah, the, the third one was the Granny Killer, which is I'm, I, I guess maybe the least memorable. And that one, I mean, we figured out the twist of that at the end, but still, they're all. Um, I think they're all effective and they all work. Um, but the acting, I mean, John Ritter, I think is the, just like I said before, that nervousness acting that he's got pressure on him throughout the whole thing, and then his complete breakdown at the end where mm-hmm. he's just yelling at people and stabbing people like. Uh, I, it was fun. It was great to watch, especially and when she's driving around the neighborhood at the end, seeing that the whole neighborhood is this neighborhood of crazies and shit is going wrong. Um, it's uh, a very entertaining movie. Um, I liked it very much. I recommend it. Terror Tract. Terror Tract. Yeah, uh, this movie was 
So much fun. It's fun. So much fun. Um, we've done anthologies in the past that I, I didn't necessarily enjoy as much. Um, this one was fun. Like, just... The the stories the stories were were on point they they kept your attention enough um you know they none of them were were weak enough that I thought they were boring mm. and I've thought that about anthologies in the past like okay I didn't really it just didn't keep my attention all all three of these did even if one is weaker than the other they all kept my attention I thought that was really great mm. um. John Ritter, I love John Ritter so much. May he rest, <laughs> Lord Almighty. I I love that you could visually see his character losing his shit. Like you start off and you've got this charismatic guy who's trying to sell a house, and you're like, yeah, this guy seems like he's successful, and you know he's he's a cool guy. And then you really do every time they cut back, you see him just starting to lose it a little bit more. Like, okay, he really wants to make this sale. <laughs> yeah. Maybe and, if, if yeah. it had been a higher quality, we could have seen him sweating a little bit more yeah. as the scenes went on. <laughs> like <laughs> he, not a good quality. he really started to like panic and you could see that. Yeah. And I, it was just fantastic. <laughs> and God bless Brian Cranston. Oh, man. man. I, uh, what can be said, Colin? What can be said? I mean, really? Heisenberg. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sums it up. <laughs> no, I thought he was he was fantastic. I, it's true. Years years go by, we're going to be like, is this the was this the movie where John Ritter was the realtor and Brian Cranston fights a monkey? Mm-hmm. Brian Cranston yeah. fights a yeah. monkey is the sentence that mm-hmm. I think this will be yeah. remembered by. Absolutely. I yeah, and the end with all the the scenarios in the front yards. It was it was perfect. This was so much fun. I loved it. Definitely give it, what do we say, one fuck, one shit, one side boob. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. All the fucks, shits, and side boobs. All of them. Love it. (laughs) All right. Terror Trek. So this movie, for me, was like an utter delight. I I was really excited to watch this movie, and I'm glad it, like, held up to my expectations. It delivered. It totally delivered. I think, uh, definitely go watch the trailer, just so you can, I, as best as we are describing it we are not doing it justice to the level of insanity that incur- yeah. occurs in this go watch the trailer actually was the trailer i think ma- was the trailer like a five minute thing that like gave away all the yeah it, 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 gave, it, it gave the- away a lot it was like three minutes at, yeah. at least all right maybe don't go watch the trailer right if but, it's a long yeah. trailer, <laughs> yeah, if it's a yeah. trailer yeah. don't watch it but, but if you we, don't we kind of just gave everything away anyway so yeah. that's true yeah very true <laughs> yeah i mean I was an hour into this yeah. an hour into this where we gave everything away yeah very true <laughs> But even if you're not sure you want to sit through this whole thing, just watch the story with Brian Cranston and the monkey. Because that one alone is, is, if nothing else, just watch that. But I would really like to see the horror community get behind this movie. Yes. I would like to see, you know, gifts made of this. I would share the shit out of some gifts of this movie. Oh, yeah. I would like to see, you know, Fright Rags do t-shirts. I would buy a t-shirt with Brian Cranston fighting that monkey. Yes. I, you know, yes. Um, I would really like to see... John Ritter's realtor John Ritter, company. John Ritter, John Ritter, John Ritter like, on yeah. the front. Like, yeah. just... Make me an offer. I, yes! I want that T-shirt. Yeah, I really want someone to write their college thesis about how this is an indictment of like the white picket fence American dream, and you know, <laughs> yes. there's because yes. there, there is some some subtext here if you yes. really dig into it. I'm oh, sure yeah. we but, didn't even talk about the whole opening to the movie, which was like a, a kind of an homage to like Blue Velvet or something, where the camera goes in into oh, yeah. the, oh, yeah. the like uh, the neighborhood. Oh, right? the, yeah, and yeah. It goes and finds the the bird. Oh, it finds the worm, then the, worm. the bird, oh, then bird, then yeah. cat eats yeah. the bird, then the yeah. cat gets hit by the car and the dog, the, you know. Oh. I will say this movie is really harsh on animal cruelty yes, and very, very explicit much. and very yeah. explicit about it. So if that's something that bothers you, just be forewarned about yes. that. Yeah. Like, and it starts Sad. right from the get go with it, too. It doesn't waste any time. No. So, yeah, yeah. That's your intro yeah. to this world. Mm hmm. But yeah, I, I would really, I really think there are is some subtext to this movie if you dig into it, which sounds insane to say about a realtor anthology. But <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great, and I'm I'm really glad we uh we decided to watch this one. Yeah. Hell yeah! I did pay it off. So thank you, G Money. Thank you, thank G-Money. you, G Money. <laughs> that suggestion. All right. So uh, next week, then uh, it's my pick. I'm Colin, our final listener pick. Colin, right? What's your pick next week? I am going to. I went down the list and uh, we watched some trailers. I'm going to do. You ready for this? John Michael Thor in Rock and Roll Nightmare. John Michael right. Thor. Wow. I know this movie's like. This uh, is going to be an experience. I think yeah. it's like a mystery <laughs> or riff tracks kind of thing. So I'm guessing it's going to be horrible. Horrible, prepare yourself. We'll find out next week. Rock and Roll Nightmare Here on the is. Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.